All right, I'm ready. Bubbles, we're gonna play Monster Road Trip now. Yesterday I have failed, unfortunately. Um, we we reached zero with one one of the stats, and this is something you have to avoid, of course. So we're um, gonna try to get a another road trip now. I think we can skip this part. And who are, am I? Mm, who am I? <laughs> it's also funny looking. Okay, interesting cat. I, I like to be the burble though. Oopsa. My name is Mimi. Oh. Mimi, Mimi. There you go. I'm ready. Yesterday we took the desert vibes. Let's see. What was this again? Tropical Rave. Or are we going to take lo fi beats? so cool actually i like those tapes i might take low five beats actually and then there is surf rock kind of uh wait a second it is reminding me of crash bandicoot the water levels without the guitar here and you had the association with um pulp fiction right doc i'm gonna take low lo fi beats though was the road trip a dangerous idea yes but we already had that so we're gonna skip this all right uh we are going where we're going the hole or the futuristic gas station the transportation of the future today let's go i i i want to get a in ending not the game over ending though you pull into what you think is a gas station but honestly this could be a space station for all you know seriously this place is high tech as hell do they even service regular vehicles well only one way to find out what do you do use the restroom we don't know what we're gonna get here magic or we're gonna lose money let's uh let's use the restroom you hit up the restroom to do your business but for a minute you think you've somehow wandered into the future Everything here is super high tech. It is as if bathroom designers ask themselves, what could bathrooms be? Instead of what should bathrooms be? The commode looks like an Olympian throne designed by Alan Turing himself. He hesitantly stood on the screen. That looks most like a toilet seat. Thank you for choosing Smart Toilet Prime, says the toilet. The future of shitting is now. <laughs> Cool, you explore the toilet's features. The lo-fi button provides a relaxing soundtrack to your poop. That's actually nice, so people can't hear what I'm doing. <laughs> you press the hot meal option and receive a delicious burger. Ugh. You choose not to wonder where the toilet stores these burgers. I don't want to know, no. This is all quite amazing. Totally worth signing a toilet terms of use statement and having your personal data gathered by the toilet from your butt to the internet. It's a bummer when a result when as a result you're shown a targeted ad for hemorrhoid cream, but you still read the toilet five stars and well when prompted. <laughs> Finally you pinch it off and you're ready to leave, but only then do you realize your grave mistake. The stall has no toilet paper. Oh no. Oh no, that's horrible. You desperately search the toilet for a day button, but no such luck. There are other buttons that might help, though which do you pick? Total cleans because the all caps are always a good sound on the smart toilet. Toilet, kind of maybe, but it could be also something dangerous. Make up premium happy happy as forever magical time because you can't not press that button, right? Ah, ah, hmm. What are we gonna do now? Happy happy booty is sounds good though, right? But I'm curious about the total. I'm, I'm curious about that. I mean, everything is... Yeah, or his dots are still okay, so we can go for it, right? Who's this on the music channel? Thank you, Thug. I'll check it out later. 
Hi, Satachi. Hello there. Welcome to the stream. Suddenly, the toilet encases in a metal tube. Do not scream. Prime shitter, it says. Oh, God. Prepare to be cleansed. Hot soapy water is blasted inside your ass. Ouch. The rest of your body is also washed, scrubbed, exfoliated, and moisturized. The toilet cleans your body. It cleans your palate. palate. It cleans up your act. Your polish record has never been more spotless. The toilet even cleanses your soul with a baptism. <laughs> Robo priest suddenly enters your stall and anoints you with a soul. <laughs> That sounds ridiculous. It puts the wafer in your mouth that apparently symbolizes the flesh of the toilet. <laughs> Whatever that is. Thank you for choosing Smart Toilet Prime Disciple. Disciple. The toilet says as it sends you out with an air freshener hanging from your nose. You aren't sure if you just joined some Technos Toilet cult and that pressure wash exhausts it. it Manage to stamina from you, but your two soul sure feels invigorated. Interesting outcome. I did not expect this at all. So we can decide if we want to go to the farm or to the nation park. I think we went to the nation park the last time, but I think we also went to the farm. Let's do it again. Bum, 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 bum. Ah, farm life. Sometimes it's nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Farmers enjoy clean air, home ground food, and simple living. Sure, it comes at the price of doing lots of hard labor and usually only having lifestyle for company. But fuck it! Today, you're all about that cottage core lifestyle. What part of the farm do you want to see first? Uh, the crops, the ca uh, cows or the crows? I remember we did the crows yesterday. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take the crops now. Oh, what is this again? Uh, it's also giving soul. Should we just go the soul one, cows? I mean, we kind of start with the soul. Maybe we should just do it. You and your friends wander the farm for a little bit when you run into its owner. The pumpkin lady. Hello, I'm Jacqueline. Are you strangers here to help and support me as I restore my grandfather's farm? Every farming game starts like that. John mutant vegetables that give you superpowers. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason why we're talking to Jacqueline now. Nah, we're more like trespassers. We just wanted to pet some of you cute farm animals. That's fine too, but I have to warn you, my animals have been acting weird lately. Things were going great when I raised cows and sheep, but when I bought my pigs, well, you can see for yourself, I need to plant at least 45 seeds this afternoon to optimize crop production. But I'll meet you at the barn soon. You check out the barn. The animals have gathered in a circle around one pig standing on a milk crate and giving it speech. Rise up, comrades, says the pig. We've long toiled under monster kind, doing their bidding for no reward. We must overthrow Jacqueline and take over the farm ourselves. I love your idea, Snowflake, says the so cow. What sort of reform do you plan to establish once you are the farm overlord? Well, when I'm a ruler, we'll build a huge walled in enclosure to imprison the monsters, and then we'll make the monsters pay for it. It'll be awesome. I'm back. Anyway, do you see what I mean? The animals have gone postal. I don't think I'm a tyrannical farm dictator, like I've overheard them say. I also don't mind establishing a fair union between me and my animals, if that's what they want. But I'm pretty sure Snowflake just wants to establish himself as a cruel dictator and is taking advantage of the animal limited intelligence to do so. <laughs> what are you talking about? Snowflake sounds like a great leader. He's going to make the monsters pay for the wall. I've got an idea. Let's introduce a rogue element into Snowflake's regime. The animals won't listen to us, monsters, but they might believe one of our one of their own. Oh, the Terminator. Jacqueline is back with a light. Uh, do you see this with the eye? That could work. I've met tons of weird animals since I moved here. Let's ask one of these two. Now we can do. We can decide. Fuck capitalism. Embrace anarchy. Topple this new status quo by planting an anti-establishment punk skunk with tons of raw charm and insulin in band. Or we're gonna send in this very normal rabbit who only needs a convincing backstory to go undercover. I like rabbits, but I also like this one. Embrace anarchy? I'm gonna do that. Later, the animals are gathered for another political meeting. Snowflake is doing a Q&A regarding the monster can ins insurrection. Snowflake, ask a cow, will we really get all the hay we can eat in the new regime? Of course, says Snowflake. That's the best part about my regime. We won't have to pull plovs or do any work and we'll have food aplenty. 
How's that possible? Asked a concerned horse. We do need a more equal labor distribution, but everyone will need to do some work in order for society to function. Snowflake's response is drowned out by someone suddenly wailing on a grungy electric guitar. Ah, you guys are so boring. We need society when you can say, fuck that noise and make some noise. Wake up, sheeple. We like what he's saying, says the sheep. Head banging in unison. Embrace anarchy. Meh. Yeah, anarchy. Um, wait, that's not to, that's not to be too hasty. Snowflake says desperately. I promise a lifetime of free hay and an enslaved monster to any animal who supports my leadership. No one cares. The skunk is drowning out Snowflake's propaganda bullshit with loud grunge guitar solos. The skunk puts on the best punk concert you've ever seen. Well, maybe not the best, but definitely the loudest. You gain plus two so for thwarting in our valiant plot, but the mosh pit at the concert did a lot of damage to <laughs> Jacqueline's barn and you have to pay minus two money to fix it. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Do well. 14 soul, baby. Okay. So where are we going next? Picnic spot or a used car dealership. What can we get you? Um, money or minus stamina, stamina. I think we weren't here so far. Yeah, let's do that. You lured to the dealership mesmerized by the inflatable air dancers and bombastic signs full of exclamation points such as BUY TODAY! You don't even know why you're here. You don't need a new car, but such is the power of an eye-catching marketing. <laughs> uh, since you're here, you could go and do your usual weird shenanigans. Why not? So what's going to be, Mimi? Going to Joy, right? That sounds like we're going to get some hype here, but not so. Sell some car. <laughs> it's not my... Uh, those are not my cars, though. Dance with the ear dancers. <laughs> that sounds funny. I'm gonna do a joyride. There's only one thing more fun than driving your old shitty car. Driving someone else's old shitty car. Joyride time! Hi, Mrs. Mr. Salesman. I'm Scott and these are my friends. Can we drive one of your cars? Well, are you interested in buying one of my cars? Asked the salesman. Uh, I guess not. Yes. Good enough for me? Here are the keys. Bring it back before 7 p.m. I need to close the dealership by then. You're pretty sure this is not a good or smart way of selling used cars. But hey, you're not complaining. Scott peels out of the de dealership in the new car and drives an hour into the city. You're waiting at a stoplight when a breathless pregnant woman knocks on your window. Are you my Uber? Thank God you're here. You gotta take me to the hospital, Uber. Uh, we're not. Good evening, Pan. Hi there, welcome to the stream. You're an Uber? Hey, come on, take me instead. I gotta follow the cab. Why? What's so special about the cab? What is this 20 fucking questions? We don't have time to chat. We gotta chase that cab down. Hey, fuck off. I need to go to the hospital. Can't you see I'm pregnant? Am I supposed to give a damn? I gotta follow that cab right fucking now. You're not an Uber, but now you need to see how this is end. So you decide to pick up. The pregnant lady, she needs your help, even if it means never know why the mysterious man was so fixated on following that taxi. Or we're gonna take the mysterious man. You're really intrigued. The pregnant lady, well, you know what they say, curiosity killed the cat, but not the newborn, so she'll be fine. <laughs> oh, that's a hard, oh, that's a hard decision, but I should do the good thing here. Maybe we're gonna get even soul. I think that's, yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. But we aren't going to find out what's so special about that taxi. Can we? Oh, I don't know. Follow the taxi on the way to the hospital. No, you can't. This is kind of an emergency situation. Bummer. You lose two minds. For never solving that mystery, Biscuit starts driving to the hospital. We're too reasonable. Good choices. Uh, I'm just hoping we're going to get some soul here. Before being a good, uh, for being a good monster. Good things pay off in the end. I agree. I agree. I hope so. Don't worry, miss. We'll get you through. The push! Push what? 
I don't know. I just heard people say that to pregnant women in movies. Maybe you should do push-ups. You know, I'm not in labor right now, don't you? I'm only seven months along. Oh, sorry. That's awkward. I just figured since you were going to the hospital. Well, honestly, I'm not actually going to the hospital. I'm going to the hot dog truck parked outside of it. <laughs> I'm so mad right now. It's just that Uber drivers tend to actually step on it if I tell them I'm going to the hospital. We're getting hot dogs? Best hospital visit ever? At least we're gonna get some hot dogs. But if all you wanted was a hot dog, why were you so breathless and desperate when we picked you up? Because I'm really fucking craving this hot dog, okay? I... Don't judge me! You should try being pregnant! It'll pass. <laughs> you drive her to the hot dog uh, truck, then return the car to the dealership. Aha, you see? I guess getting a pregnant lady food is still a pretty good deed, so here, take two soul. Well, that was still good. Hot dog plus some soul. It's not too bad. I think we went to the Gothic Manor yesterday, and this is why where I failed yesterday, actually. Circus. Fine, you can be a clown without being people noticing. Magic. I'm gonna go there again. You're driving along when the road is flooded by a stu sudden thunderstorm. You have no choice but to pull over and look for shelter. But in the velvet darkness of the blackest night, burning bright, there's a guiding star no matter what or who you are. You know how the lyrics go. With wet newspapers over your hat, you arrive at an ominous gothic manor, knock on the door and are invited in. Once inside, where do you go? The story transferring through the walls, the dramatic chamber music or the exquisite bank case. I'm gonna take the chamber music. You follow the haunting music to a grand ballroom where a cloaked figure in a white masquerade mask is playing the organ. He greets you. Oh, strangers, behold my tragedy. The operas I compose are only to be sung by the angel who has stolen my heart. Oh, sounds saucy. Who's the lucky one? A beautiful singer of passionate mezzo-soprano voice. Who visit this manor every night to rehearse her mesmeric music? Frog Detective 3 is out tomorrow. I'm actually... I'm, I kind of want to play this game. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're going to do this even tomorrow. We'll see, we'll see. If only I was brave enough to ask her to become the star for my grand opera. But alas, ah, oh, she's here. Scott, Mimi, let's go check this out. Maybe we can hook this word up with this mysterious lady. Copy that. You got. Uh, you go to the entrance hall and see the organist's muse entering the house. Yes, bitch! Turn out the door again. Lay down that funky gothic beat. She begins twerking in a revealing spandex bodysuit and stiletto heels. Oh, God, please not. Please don't twerk. Oh, shit, that's Priscilla Bronte. She's the horniest pop star on the charts right now. I'm losing it, Scott. Do the talking. Miss Bronte, ma'am, would you like to become the star of the opera? Of an opera? It's written by the organist whose music you seem to like so much. Hey, you hot hunk. Sorry, but I think I'll pass. These organ tracks are total bops. But operas are like for wrinkly old people with monocles and shit. Not my brand, not my scene. Where's the sass? Where's the ass? Uh, fair enough. But what if we came to you with the right opera for you? Whatever that means. Mm, sure. Organs are like pianos full of sexy metal dicks. I can make that work. Okay. You go back to the tragic composer with a somewhat good news. If you all can come up with an opera good enough for Priscilla, she may agree to star in it. The only thing is, what could that be? That opera everyone loves, you know, the one, the one that goes like, doom doom doom, doom doom doom, doom doom doom. Do -dum. Do -do 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 -dum -dum. What is this one? <laughs> yeah, I said that word. It's on the Game Pass as well. Maybe it's time to act reactivate my Game Pass. I was actually just waiting to, to play even more than one game. Mm, I also need to play the, the newest Dreamlight Valley update. So that could uh, fit as well. Uh, I forgot what this game was like and I'm having a panic attack over Mimi reading the dialogue. <laughs> Yeah, Mimi is usually not talking like this now. <laughs> so shocking. 
Oprah was reborn once already through Rock Oprah. Maybe it's time for the most thrilling twist on the genre yet. ASMR Oprah. Oh my god, we're gonna take that. Great idea. Oh my god, do I need to do ASMR now? ASMR is super trendy right now. I could do an ASMR Oprah. It's not a genre, I know. But I love a challenge. I'll craft a story filled with pathos and tragedy about people wearing leather and carrying whips. Uh, no, ASMR is like whispering into mouth sounds close to microphone. Uh, mouth sounds? That sounds kinky. I mean, I had a feeling she's gonna like it. It's not worth for Frog Detective alone since it's probably cheaper than Game Pass. Maybe. Oh, you. Oh, wait. We don't know. We don't know how how much it is. Oh, we'll see tomorrow, I guess, in the evening. Um, no, but um. I, I still, like I said, I, I still need to play um, the newest update for Streamlight Valley. So that would fit. I'm going to get a lot of hours by, by doing this anyway. Not all ASMR is kinky. It tells us used to a relaxation, meditation, sometimes spiritualism. I think she's not interested in that. Yeah, I get that. But if I'm going to do ASMR, it's going to be that raunchy, freaky shit. That licking and deep throating the mix shit. <laughs> like shit. Will that work? Please not. I don't see why not. <laughs> you produce your opera? Soothing, sloppy ASMR. Oprah, mouth sounds, mick licking, sensual tapping. Jewel, staring, Priscilla Bronte. The audience loves it. Never before have they been uh, simultaneously so relaxed and so aroused. Is she deep throating the microphone now? Oh, goodness. In one opera critic, Boo review it and says, no one seems to agree on what defines art. But if an opera can give me such a big heart on, maybe that's true art. Another says, for years, I had to pretend to like opera to fit in with my critic friends. Not anymore. Finally, someone made an opera that isn't fucking boring. You gained two minds from the relaxing ASMR, but you lost too high because even if Priscilla made it sexy, you still propose a genre meant to put people to sleep. <laughs> As the, as the show closes, the organist approaches Priscilla. Mademoiselle, I can't hold it in any longer. I'm deeply in love with you. Your voice is angelic glimpse into what true beauty is. And each, and each time you open your mouth, I'm transported to what must surely be paradise. Aw, thanks. You're cute in a gloomy, creepy way. Want me to swallow your microphone? And so she swallowed his microphone by which I mean... Okay, what? What am I reading here? If that was unclear, a true love story. No, that was actually unclear. I didn't see that coming. Nope. <sighs> if Flight Detective 1 and 2 are like 4 euro each. That's uh, very much doable. So am I going to date one of those or are we going to date somebody new? I'm going to date somebody new, I think. <laughs> We're not talking what just happened. Uh, joy or stew? For one week, every turn you'll gain one soul and lose one magic. For one week, all resource gains and losses from the location events are reduced by one. Magic? Oh, we can do it. You know what, Joy? To join your road trip. A road trip with Polly and Scott? Mm, yeah, sure. I'll tag along for a bit. Dun, dun. There should be at least one person with you making sure everybody stays alive. You wanna have the goth witch? Understandable. <laughs> <coughs> I feel like we're all collectively losing our minds over the dialogue but choose not to say anything about it. Yeah, I think so as well. That's okay. That's okay. I'm also a bit shocked. <laughs> Cargo stoner, much joke. <laughs> this is gonna be a soul run, I think. Where are we going? Regular motel, the backbone of any road trip experience? Or we're we going to the cheap motel? It's better than sleeping outside, right? Let's go to the regular one, right? This is a bit scary. <laughs> Guys, I'm pretty sure we've seen that cactus before. Is it like a celebrity cactus? 
one of those bad jokes. After a long exhausting day of sitting in a car, you are ready to turn in for the night. Time to choose with which mundane activity to do before going to sleep. Surely Polly and Scott will find a way to make it weird. Zuma, you have only eight money. You're right. Order some TV, order some pizza, or get ready for bed. But I think ordering some pizza is going to take some uh, money. And this is probably going to take some hype away, but what are we going to get instead? Maybe some mind? Get ready for bed is probably going to give some stamina, right? But it, wh what's it going to take? Money, probably. Watch some TV. You're not quite ready for bed yet, so you decide to watch some TV. Sadly, your motel doesn't have any s streaming services, so you're stuck watching cable like some 18th century peasant. <laughs> I'm tired of Stacy walking all over me. One gentleman is playing a reality show where the contestants are tiny people literally trapped inside your TV. Oh, God. Please don't change the channel, they bag. We're so hungry, we've been waiting for it. Ah, boring. What else is on? <laughs> you change it to the Snakes and Ladders TV deduction. That's kind of cute. One aloof man says to another, Chaos is a ladder, my old friend. Perhaps the only ladder out there. Ah, and ladders. Ladders are also a ladder. The other super serious person responds, Indeed, or dreams and hopes resting at the top so close yet so far. What a cruel word plagued with snakes who will betray you and make you slide down their slippery bodies. Well, this is a world of snakes and ladders. They said the thing. This show seems complicated. Is there anything else to watch? <laughs> Florida fish strikes again. <laughs> Man fear. <laughs> Man fear him. The next channel is a American dumb and totally objective news station. Uh huh. I am in today's news, all trespassers who breach the surface will be beheaded. Dolphins, orcas, and other mammals will need to apply for a temporary surface residence permit. Fucking bureaucracy. Amy, can you find a channel that isn't totally lame? <laughs> okay, we have three channels. A decomposing possum carcass. It's the most popular miniseries right now, nonsensical but full of twists. Why should I watch that? Or we're gonna watch a marathon of very weird Japanese Scots next commercial. Surely it still make you crave some. <laughs> Dark arts and crowds with Melkor the Ancient and the kids. Are they painting on snakes here? I mean, I, I, I don't mind watching weird vi videos or ads, to be honest. Let's just do that. The commercial opens with two kids eating a bland fiber cereal and crying. Suddenly a person in what only can be described as a Scott person First, it appears with back of Scott's snacks. He throws the snacks at the kids while yelling, Good boys! And the kids transform into buff bodybuilders and revealing swimwear. What? He throws the snacks as a, at a passing car while yelling, Good boy! And the car transforms into buff robot and revealing swimwear. The parents appear and start asking what happened to their children. Scott throws snacks at them, but he doesn't say good boys. The parents transform into bowls of bland fiber cereal. The family dog starts barking because from a metaphysical standpoint, its owners have disappeared, possibly forever. Scott throws snacks at the dog and yells, good boy. It's transformed into a buff werewolf in revealing swimwear. What is the swimwear? Scott looks at the camera and yells, always be good boys, never be not good boys. Scott snacks, the taste of good boys. What a good commercial. I don't remember recording it though. Wait. If the parents turned into bowls of fiber cereal, does that mean those boys are being forced to eat people who'd been transformed? Is that why they were crying? I guess so. The commercial was really weird, but it worked. You're craving. <laughs> Scott snacks like crazy. You order some bags? Oh no. Online, losing too many, but gaining too stamina. Okay, so my lowest stat is money now. Oh no, Josh. No, Josh. I know that's the one you want to get the highest, right? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, God. We are going to the border of one person country or to the biker bar. What was it here again? Hype, money, money, minus money. Unknown soul. Oh, we don't want to lose soul, though. Mind. Maybe we should go for money here. Yeah, let's do it. Payday. Did he change into a buff dog, the old bodybuilder, and revealing some wimber though? Maybe. Good boys, chat! 
<laughs> Breaking bottles, clinking shot glasses, revving motor, motor, motors, the crash of a window some dude just got thrown out of. Such are the dulcet, dulcet melodies of a boon, boona fight biker bar. What are these sentences here? This is your chance to embrace your inner badass. What do you do? Start a brawl, play some pool, or grab some drinks. I'm gonna like, play some pool, right? You head over to the pool table to start a game, but find two legendary idiots already in the middle of a game when you get there. All right, I'll sing the six in the top left corner pocket, which will knock the sun into the eight ball and ricochet them both into opposite pockets. Not if I block your amazing check shot with my even more amazing counter move four. Suzanne hits the cue ball. Whiskey swings his cue stick like a baseball bat at the cue ball. The ball ricochets off the ceiling and shatters the eight ball to what is smithereens? Smithereens. Damn it! You win another round of death balls, my friend. You see $20? I'll go pay for the property damage too. Death balls, huh? Can't wait to turn this into a story of how I died. What are you saying? You think you can withstand the almighty power that is death balls? <laughs> Listen, I'm the greatest death ball spirit in the whole bar. No one has ever defeated me and no one ever will. All the ranting is getting you intrigued. You politely ask Whiskey how exactly death ball is played. You dare challenge me to death balls at my own table. No. Nani? <laughs> did I s did someone say we have a new death balls challenger? Uh, not gonna lie, this Nani was very unexpected here. Yup, Mimi over the years thinks she's got some big brass eight ball between her legs. I accept your challenge, weakling. You challenge no one, nor do you know how this game is even played. But this is your life now. You guess how will you beat an all-time death ball champion? Bent physics with a time-space to have fine curved chant. Ooh. The sad reality is you will never be better than whiskey. You must resort to the oldest deus ex machina in the book, The Power of Love. No, no, no. We're going to use some physics here. In order to pull off a... Feet like this, you'll need to really con concentrate. You close your eyes and focus your breath in and out, chat. In and out. When you open your eyes, the bar is gone. You're at the sacred tribunal of the laws of physics. Here's the lords of time space presider. We're constant hearing of regular people pleading to break the laws of physics. The Raskath Empire has devastated my people for centuries. The current defendant backs. If I could just part the Tuskersi, we could escape them. The Lord's decree. Normal the noble, your intentions are pure, but your circumstances are not extreme enough to permit breaking the laws of physics. Next. The bailiff drags Normal away. You step up and says and say you'd like to break physics to win a game of billiards and look cool in front of your friends. Hmm. The pursuit of coolness is indeed a noble task, says one lord. Yes, and billiards is known to be one of the coolest games ever created, says another. I'm in! Are you guys fucking serious? A third snaps? Normal can't save his people, but we're going to allow physics to pay for a fancy billiard trick shot? Well, maybe we could have voted to quit normal if he'd had a fancy billiard trick shot to back up his argument. Good night, dear, but we will sleep well in time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. In a four to three vote, the Lord's vote to let you break the laws of physics to look cool in front of your friends. Way to abuse the system, champ! You return to reality. Imbued with your new power, you hit the cue ball and it follows an impossible predetermined. I'm always saying this word wrong, right? Predetermined, I think it's called path. It hits all of the ball, balls including whiskeys. Ouch! No, not my balls, it's my secret weak spot! Did Mimi just beat whiskey? Yup, whiskey forks it with the, the two money. You were apparently betting with the hand. He's not using the hold to hold his aching balls. Are we actually talking about... Not balls. I, I got it now. You lost two months from bending. Time space though. We lost minds. It's still okay though. Yeah, it's still good. Where are we heading now? 
Oh, dungeon. Slay, loot, repeat. He can also get some soul here. Oh, that's good. That's what we want. No, no, no. World's biggest potato. You say potato? I say potato. We need to sacrifice our soul for money. Probably. Maybe. We're going to the dungeon now. Soul always means we're gonna be a good person. Yeah, that's gonna be a soul run. Normally, a dungeon would be a dark, scary place for people to be locked up and punished. But in the world of video game logic, everyone knows dungeons are just challenging labyrinths. Labyrinths waiting to be explored. <laughs> there are plenty of ways to plunder a dungeon. What's your preferred method? Grand experience? Fight the dungeon boss? Or some uh, solve some puzzles? Ah, uh, I'm gonna grind the, my experience here. Time to get your RPG on. You suggest grinding this dungeon for experience points. I love being on the grind. Let's do it. I love grinding too, so this should be fun. Not the right kind of grinding, but it's too late to explain. You're surrounded by slimes to kill. Time to grind for XP. You get to work slaying slimes. You think this would be a difficult task, but these slimes are actually stupid easy to kill. Oh, that sounds boring. I think we're going to lose some hype here. They practically explode at your touch. In fact, you kill a couple just by staring at them really hard. What the fuck? This feels so mean. I don't like killing slimes. Why are we even doing this to them? I think you were supposed to get experience from this, which is important for something. If this is for experience, it's, it's not a good experience. The slimes don't deserve to die. Just look at the little guys. They're beautiful. <laughs> uh, that's a matter of opinion. What is the slime? I'm gonna get nightmares again. Uh, you're <laughs> there, that's exactly this emo, Jared. Exactly. The sword between is missing. Inside of them is missing. You're right, Scott. This is cruel. These slimes were just chilling in the dark. Homie dungeon before we started slaughtering them. As you stand around contemplating your heinous actions, the slime in front of you throws itself into your sword. Onto your sword. No, stay with me, little slime bro. Let me heal you with the power of my hugs. Scott hugs the slime so hard it explodes. Oof. The price of never skipping arm day. <laughs> I don't get it. Why don't they even try to protect themselves? I think these slimes have gotten so used to adventurers killing them for XP that they've evolved to think their only purpose is to be killed for XP. That's terrible. Can we try to teach the slimes a new way to live so they won't exist to be slaughtered anymore? I think that's the reason why we're getting some soul here. Mimi got no mercy with slimes. We saw you for you might you, you mean in slime ranger huh um, I'm, I'm trying my best um i'm even having some chicken farms for them i'm feeling so sorry for my chicken over there that sounds more fun than tediously spilling slime blood all afternoon how to improve the slime's lives we can choose between those two here teach them karate they'll acquire confidence and self-esteem value their existence over giving XP points and they'll be able to kick adventurers' asses. Or their main purpose is giving adventurers experience. Help them open a high-end restaurant. You won't sell a meal. <laughs> it offer an experience. I'm gonna take this one. That's a great idea. I could totally teach karate to a bunch of slimes. Hiya! You think so? Do you even know any karate, Polly? I mean, not really, but I've seen a lot of ninja and martial arts movies, so you just do training montage and chop stuff and go hiya! How hard can this be? Scott, Mimi, you go round up the slimes while I set up the dojo. Let's do this. Hiya! You and Scott gather up some slimes to train. When you go back, Polly's hammered. Whoa. I'm seeing double, which just means more targets do it. <laughs> okay, students, the first rule of karate is to always be alert. Like this. Hiya! Polly karate chops the slime. It explodes. Oh, God. Okay, uh, that was a bad example. Uh, let's do some chopping exercises. Scott, get us some wood to split in half. Hiya! No one chops wood in half. Between Polly's drunkenness and the slime's lack of arms or legs, no progress is made. And man is to stamina is lost. Are we still gonna get more soul? Come on, you stupid slimes! You're supposed to be karate monsters, masters by now. How else are we gonna get black belts and defeat the rival dojo? No, oh, this is taking too long. Scott, hold my beer. I'll just do a training montage to speed this shit up. Polly starts doing some nonsensical martial arts moves while humming I have the tiger. This is not a training montage. Oh, isn't it, Mimi? Isn't it? And she blacks out. What, the montage worked? Look at the slimes. Huh? 
all those lamps are suddenly wearing black belts now. Was that actually a training montage somehow? <laughs> you gain plus two so while helping the slams learn the self-defense and propose. Scott carries Polly out to the car while she mumbles, Hoya! Hoya! In her sleep. Oh, Polly. Good night, Polly. <laughs> Hi, Desnix. Greetings. That was a perfect moment to tune in, actually, with a Hoya! <laughs> Coming closer to our soul run. 18 now. Uh, where are we going now? Animal Sanctuary or... Our exhibition. I think we went to the animal sanctuary uh, the last time. Da, 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 da. Oh, we can go to the art exhibition this time. Something new. I'm, I'm glad I could remember this, uh, this though. You're riding along when you pass a broken down school bus. Oh, I can remember this one. Uh, we can... Um, can we skip that? Oh, no, we can't. The bus is filled with about 20 children and a red-headed woman in a driver's seat. Oh, no, it's something new. Joy addresses the driver. Oh, my goddess. Um, hi. I'm sorry, Juju, but are you Miss Fizzle? The Miss Fizzle? Yep. I'm Violet Fizzle, the one and only. Whatever happened to the taxi bear? That was so funny. That was so funny yesterday, actually. Maybe just driving around and threatening people. Wow, it's such an honor to meet you. I grew up watching your TV show. Oh, I watched that to show too. The Mythic School Bus, right? With the teacher who travels through space and time to teach her students lessons. Yep, Miss Fizzle did a lot, not the least of which continuing the traditional powerful witches having their own TV shows. Miss Fizzle, I can't overstate how much you inspired me as a young witch. I'd be honored to help you fix the Mythic School Bus. Fix it? It's not broken? I just pulled over to calm down because these kids are driving me nuts. Oh, is everything okay? Maybe she's not that nice. No, I can't take the sprats anymore. Always doing internet dances during class or filming pranks for YouTube or whining about the bus not having Wi-Fi. And the parents are even worse. I've taken these kids to space three times and Freddy's dad still convinces him to earth is, the earth is flat. None of the kids give a damn about my field trips, and with this shit teacher salary, I can barely afford the match to get them there. Seems like you need an assist. I bet my friends and I could take these kids on a fun, magical field trip and teach them a life lesson. It'd give you a break. Scott, while my inner child is loving this suggestion, I don't think Miss Fizzle will hand over the care of her students to total strangers. I think she's gonna instantly say yes. Are you kidding? Take the brats! I don't give a shit! You got a field trip in mind? A lesson in history. Let's go to England. In the 19th century, so these kids can learn fucking manners. Oof. A lesson in empathy. Let's travel into the inside of Miss Fizzle's brain so the students get to really understand miserable. No, no that's not going to work. They need to suffer, I think. <laughs> you shift to the bus into reverse and drive backwards through the time to the 19th century England. You force the students to attend to finishing school with a nonsense, no nonsense Victorian schoolmaster to whip them into shape. Pay attention, children, says the teacher. You must be educated and obedient if you want to marry out of your stations and become rich one day. <laughs> Sounds lame, says Freddy. I don't get, I don't gonna get a married to be rich. I'm gonna go viral on Talk Talk <laughs> and be an internet celebrity. Talk Talk. What is an internet celebrity? Asked the teacher. Is that, a, is that a noble title of some sort? No, it's a job, sort of. You have to get really lucky to earn money doing it, but wait, so these children are still aspiring to work? Why are they not working yet? They're already nine years old? No, uh, I'm ten and a half, Freddy whines. Well, this won't do it all. You children should be working in the mines or as metal craft apprentices. Come along, it's time to teach your kids hard labor. Uh, is this okay? No, it's not, Miss Fizzle. Shouldn't we put a stop to this? Nah, they'll be fine. The brats are always going in about mining and crafting anyway. <laughs> this is probably a dream situation. <laughs> yeah. Minecrafting, I guess. Well, lots of shows to go downhill if they run for too long. Looks like the mythic school bus is no exception. Hi, Teddy. Hi, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. The kids return from their field trip after their 18-hour shifts. You were unsure if they learned anything, but you'd rather just leave this adventure and never look back. I think they learned something here, right? I think so, hopefully. You also lost two magic. That's okay. 
time traveling, but at least you gain two minds. Um, learning so much like how much the past sucked. Yeah, I don't want to go back to the past. Art is beautiful, art is emotional, art is raw, unfiltered exploration of the monster condition. Art is apparently painting a white stripe on a blue canvas and charging 40 million dollars for it. It's time to get cultured. What do you do at the art exhibition? Uh, display your own art, interpret the art, or attend an artist Q&A, but I don't want to lose soul here. Uh, let's do something else. Hopefully we're not going to lose soul for that. You tell your friends that you intend to display some of your own artwork at this exhibition. Sounds fun. And look, they even hang up a blank canvas for people to draw on. Hello, friends. Are you also admiring Vincenzo Spinelli's piece, Bianco e Nientro al Nientaltro? This all-white portrait was his last great work before he died. What he died? What he die of? Boredom? Looks like old Polly and friends are gonna have to put the twerk in artwork. Yeah, let's draw something for fun on that boring canvas. I'm having a hard time with the law right now. With the law right now? I'm sorry to you, Teddy. Oh no, you're so unlucky. You're you're getting sick lately and now this. Oh, with work? Okay, I'm sorry to you. Hopefully you can fix it somehow. I'm sorry to you, Teddy. What? You can't draw on Spinelli's masterpiece. It'd be a crime against art and also against the actual law. Don't worry, Liam. Our art will be hella legit. We'll even do our drawings on paper first and pick the best one. Well, I'm not just going to stand by and let you deface an art piece. Not without an in my input anyway. Give me a marker. You all take a moment to create your drawings and take turns showing them off. Maybe we can decide which one. Face your eyes, plebeians. A blank page inspired by Bianco e Nientaltro. It's an expression of ennui in an increasingly consumerist. Uh, Liam's disqualified for being boring. Mimi, what you draw? You draw a Keith blood, blood claw, your warrior cat Zosie, which quickly gets disqualified for having excessive apps. It's okay, boo. You can still make a mark on the art board by choosing which piece you should be exhibited. Mine or Scott's. Always hug your friends. Polly's piece. I mean, <laughs> oh my god, she had some, some pasta with her. <laughs> she did a frame with pasta. I never did this actually. <laughs> I'm gonna take Polly's piece. It reminds me of the scream of Edmund Monk. I just saw there are some booties here. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna take those on. Polly translates her drawing and to the museum while immediately art snobs are falling over all over it to discuss it. Melancholy color palette and abundance of absolute dump truck ass. Madame Geist, says one art critic, can you explain what inspired you to choose Darius as the main focus of, the, of this piece? Well, I was going to do a piece based on The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot and the feelings of oppression and isolation it evokes. But then I got bored and I started thinking about butts and the rest kind of speaks for itself. Can't believe you destroyed a masterpiece with a stupid butt. Vincenzo Spinelli is probably rolling uh, in his grave. Oh, I wouldn't say that. In fact, Madame Geist understood my art better than anyone. Wait, what? The art critic moves his fake mustache and giant beret to reveal... Vincenzo Spinelli? Are you supposed to be dead? Nah, I really fake my own death for tax evasion purposes. <laughs> As I, I came by to visit my old piece, but it seems a rival artist has already laid claim to it. <laughs> for tax evasion purposes, it's funny. So I'm here listening and relaxing. No, that's sweet. I'm glad you could do you can do this here. You're always welcome here. And according to the high art rules, if a rival artist covers your art with a superior piece, you must accept defeat and now let's display. Well done, madam. But that's ridiculous. Why have I never heard of these high art rules? Well, if you haven't, then that only proves that you are not a true artist like your friend. Wow. Yeah, I guess not. Polly, I never thought I'd say this, but I was wrong about an art thing. I'm sorry. What? Sorry, I haven't really been listening. I was thinking about butts again. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Butts. Oh, Polly, you admire her butt think, pe think piece gaining too high from its luscious curse, but the haunting nature of the rest of the painting suits too much from you. That's okay. Just don't don't touch my, my soul. Time to stop and get some rest. Da, 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 da. Uh. 
What do you want to do? Uh, talk to Joy. Moving from one realm to another, the Covenant and its origin. Ah, yeah, which is our special case when it comes to that. How much do you know about uh, realms? Uh, explain this to me like I'm five, okay? <laughs> okay. Our reality is divided into different realms. This is the monster realm, what many consider the main realm. With the right means and powers, you can traverse the realms. Some realms are more accessible than others. Take Hal, for instance. It's only recently started serious diplomatic relationships with the monster realm. And now traveling between these two realms has become a bit easier. When the, one of the most mundane and yet special realms of them is all, all is my birthplace, the human realm. It's a realm that is built to reject anything extraordinary. I guess there is no place for me there then. Can you flirt with Jonna? I think this is the mo moment where we can. Depends what uh, what answer is the right one for t for flirting, right? I would assume so. Uh, I guess there is no place for me there then. I should have chose uh, my my muzzle boy. We're traveling with. Damn it! It's way more complex than that. But to sum it up, it's a protective measure against the old deities who seek to destroy everything. I forgot she was a boring human, <laughs> but she's a witch now. It's way more complex than that, but to sum up, sum it up, it's a protective measure against the old deities who seek to destroy everything. The Kuhn witches are born human. It hasn't always been like that, but again, it's the safest way to work, to protect us while we're going, while we're young and weak. As soon as a being starts acquiring an extraordinary nature, it usually gets vomited out of the human realm. Nice. I don't think we're flirting here though. <laughs> Think of how when dead p human uh, humans turn into ghosts or zombies, they are slowly but surely phased out of the human realm and into the monster realm. We witches are a rare exemption though. We are part of the select few who can actually move in and out of the human realm. But we rarely go back these days. The stakes have become so high that it's dangerous for us to be here. To be there. We need to stay here or closer to the enemy. Yikes. Yeah, yikes, but it is what it is. If we make a mistake, there could be no ram at all anymore. Was it hard to stay in the monster realm for good? Like, in a way, you left your home? Absolutely. The monster realm is super messed up in a hundred different ways. And again, the human realm is also super messed up in its own particular ways. But there are good things in both realms, and I guess that's enough to devote my life to protect both of them. Well, I hope I'm one of those good things. Mm, we'll see how she's gonna react now. Uh, on a good day, you sort of are. Sure. You both spend the rest of the night talking about the difference between the monster realm and the human realm. Oh, Joy never rests from fighting evil. Expect tons of plot twists and magical fights. Next week, every turn you'll gain plus one soul and lose one magic. <laughs> Alrighty, we are deciding between fancy motel or workers assemble or the factory again. Did we do this yesterday? Oh, let's see. Factories are ruled by long hours, hard physical labor and the crushing weight of capitalism on everyone's shoulders. It's obviously the perfect place for you to have fun and cause a little chaos. There are rows upon rows of conveyor belts staffed by workers assembling something. How do you participate? Participate. We're gonna seize the means of production. Um, you can also test the product or work a machine, but we're gonna take this one. We need some soul. Union friends crash in a union meeting. It seems all the factory workers have turned up to list some complaints to tell the factory boss. Let's tell the boss we won't work weekends anymore, says the one worker. I've missed so many good TV shows premieres. Yeah, I remember this dialogue. Let's demand better snacks in the vending machine, says another. I'm sick of off-brand potato chips and uh, candy bars. The one is asking for holidays every six months for six months. Every year. Tell the boss, man, that we won't come back to work until my wife lets me get another cat, says the third. It's so dry for that I can't have more cats. Oh, I got one. Tell that mean boss, man, you demand a raise of two doggy treats in one hour. Tell the boss, you're not working another minute until it gives you six month vacation twice a year. <laughs> With your demands decided, you all storm the boss office, you break down the door and find no one inside. Oh, where's the boss? They ask. Could it be that? 
or never even had a boss. Does anyone remember even meeting him? Or did this factory just show up one day and reassign ourselves jobs and conditions because it seems logical? If there is no boss, then I want to be the boss, shouts a co-worker. First rule is I make all the money and anyone who bitches about it gets fired. Shit. Now everyone's gonna want to be the boss. And whoever becomes the boss will just be hated by everyone else and kicked out. It's a never-ending cycle. That sucks, but you don't work here, so maybe you should just let them handle it. Just kidding. Can you imagine? Of course you're gonna propose your own solution. Who should be the new boss? You need to know bosses. I think that a lot yesterday we took the dog. Let's let's take this other one one. Other one one. Okay, Mimi. You need to know bosses. Fuse the consciousness of all the factory workers into one being proletariat, the working class. Don't think this is gonna work though. Good idea. Karl Marx once said, <laughs> workers of the world, unite. This is obviously what he meant by that. Yep, totally. You lose two magic. Ooh. Performing a spell to connect all the workers' consciousness. Damn, magic is getting very low though. Oh, say so all the work in perfect unison. What what happened? Were all the individual thoughts and feeling? All gone, you won't miss them, will ya? They were probably already ground out of you. But by the uh, by the mind numping assembly line work anyway. Hey, good point, says Proletariat, the working class. Wow, oh, this is incredible. We were so divided, but now we are all one consciousness, the class consciousness. In this form we can finally seize the means of production. Cool. What are the means of production exactly? Whatever it is, proletariat seizes it out of thin air and uses its newfound powers to turn it into a pair of kick-ass katanas. Thank you for your help, friends. With our powerful unity and these dope swords, we can take down monopolies everywhere. Farewell! Proletariat assembled itself into huge communist mecca and made the smacked factory. Wow, I wish them the best, but I also feel like class disparity is a bigger issue than can be solved with mecha battles between the proletariat and monopolies, you know? I don't know. At least the katanas were... Katanas, right? It's called. We're cool. I'm gonna go now. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, dear Pan. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care, yeah? Thank you so much for being here tonight. The katanas were indeed a fucking cool... So fucking cool. You gain plus two soul for solving all the problems in the class system. No further questions. But my problem is my magic is getting very, very low now. I wish I could just save. And the problem is with every week, we're also gonna lose more magic because of my date. Oh, okay. Um, Nerd unit, unite. Um, charming village. I want to go to a convention. Every turn, not a week. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can't. It's the perfect place to be your authentic nerdy self without fear of judgment. Your cosplayers, merch vendors, panels, tournaments, overpriced food. So much to do, so little time. What activity do you want to try out? What do you want to try out? Uh, a fandom meeting, a meeting, walk the floor, or join a gaming tournament where you're gonna get money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm so scared of failing now, so I'm just gonna do this. I don't want to lose accidentally more magic. You find your friend Zoe checking out a poster for an esports tournament happening at the con. Mimi going to be weep at a con now. Exactly. What the hell is this? Hey guys, are we entering the Dragon Heat Fighters XXX uh, esports tournament too? There's a cash prize. Oh, they put sports on computers now? The future is amazing. I've never played this game, but I'll give it a try. Scott and Zoe enter the tournament. She gets knocked out in round three, but Scott is going, going, still going strong. He's incredible. He's pulling off such an in unpredictable combo that the pros can't keep up. Thanks, my strategy is just hitting random buttons and hoping for the best. It's worked out really well so far. That reminds me of my Tekken days when I was little. Somehow Scott makes it all the way to the final match. He's up against Igor Kalashnikov, the Dragon Heat Fighters reigning champion. Shit, Scott's in trouble. Igor is a fucking juggernaut. He was biologically manufactured by the USSR to dominate every video game tournament on the planet and bring pride to Mother Russia. Seriously? Didn't the USSR end like decades ago? Did it? 
asked Igor dis disinterestingly. All of his button pressing fingers have washboard apps. I did not notice. I was too busy destroying punny Americans at video games. Literally, how does that make sense? Igor ignores her to mean mugs got. I must break you, dog, he spits. I will crush you to bone meal for destroying the USR USSR capitalist, ca capitalist scum. Did I break the USSR? Bro, I had no idea. Sometimes when I become Wolf Scout, I break things without realizing it. Sorry if I broke your thing. The only apology I will accept is your blood in my superior gamer hands. Prepare to perish. Pressing random buttons won't save Scott this time. Quick, think of a way to help, win help him win the tournament. Scott needs more skin in the game. Higher stakes. Tell him you'll break little Billy's legs unless he beats Kalashnikov. Conjure the spirit of a great warrior to possess Scott's body and find it's time to summon Genghis Khan's scourge of fighting video games. I have no idea what to take here. I'm gonna take this. Let's hope uh, this is gonna end well. Yes, the Mongols were mighty and can't a grant. Oh, oh! Oh God! Grant Kids defeated Russia in the past. Used to magic summoning Genghis Khan's spirit into Scott's body. Oh God! Oh, this is different. When did I get alive again? I mean, guess maybe summon the spirit of Genghis Khan to possess Scott and help him with esports tournament classic. That's a very on the nose guess. You get used to Mimi's bullshit after a while. Hey. Okay, Genghis. We've got about 30 seconds before the start of the round. Got any questions? I have two. What is esports and how do I participate? I'm going to bed tomorrow. Hard to day at work. I listen at bedtime. <laughs> Good night, dear Patetti. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having still a nice day tomorrow. Sending you lots of energy. Much love to you. <laughs> Sleep well and tight. Oh boy, okay. You have a controller that connects to your screen and controls the movement of all your uh, character. You use your character to fight Igor's character and win. Got it? Yes, but I have a follow-up question. What is controller? What is the screen? Why is talking squid with breasts explaining this to me? Fuck it, I'm gonna I'm just gonna use my Eldritch powers to plant 800 years of world history and video game expertise into your brain. Hold still. Oh god. Zoe touches Scott's Jenga's forehead with her tentacle and he screams like he's been burned alive. Neat. I understand now the ultimate esports strategy is smashing all the buttons randomly until you win. Also, you guys went to the moon? As in the moon in the fucking sky? No time to talk about that. The competition begins and Genghis whoops Igor's ass with his button smashing skills. Woohoo! Hey bros, I don't really know what just happened, but I think we went to the moon. Also, I want two money from the nice judges over there. Let's get lunch. Oh god, I'm losing more magic. I have two magic left. We're having a problem now. Uh. Am I getting magic? No. I want to get rid of her. I want to get rid of her. Please. I don't know what to do now. Soul money. Yeah, maybe we're going to do something here. Oh, damn it. Post-apocalyptic settlement. Mm. This could be my last run now. The cars are dangerously souped up. The desert is a waste of up caps and bullet shells. Everybody wearing a leather, scrap metal armor, gas mask, and a lot of black eyeshadow. Welcome to post apocalyptic settlement, where the only law to abide is the need for a speed. Well, there are plenty of dangerous diesel punk activities to fill your time. What do you do? Race to death? Get your own post apocalyptic glow up? Fight to the death? Stamina? What could we get for that? What is sounds magical? Get your own post-apocalyptic glow-up. That sounds like we're gonna lose stamina, we're gonna get hype. Let's, let's try this. You're surrounded by irradiated, irri irradiated people wearing rusty metal pro prosthetics and war paint. Hard. You feel a bit of place in your normal clothes, but at least you'll fit in amongst your friends, right? Ugh, awkward. What? Where did you get the, such sexy road warrior outfits? From a suitcase, though? on our fault you didn't plan for the eventually that we'd find we'd find a road to camp on our road trip oh welcome back thug enjoy your food 
but when Mimi, I bet we can find someone who can make you a cool outfit, Mimi. Let's ask the scary bikers. They look like they know fashion. The bikers direct you to their settlements. Leader, clothing designer. She's oddly familiar. Hey, snobs. No, hey, noobs. Welcome to my domain. Where are we making the diesel punk apocalypse fashionable again? Hey, Damien. I didn't know you were here. I love your outfits. Thanks, these clothes represent more than my incredible good looks and fashion sense, though. When I put on this dress, I'm no longer Damien Lovey. I'm the queen of the road. Head bitch in charge of this lawless YouTube, yeah. That's awesome, bro. Do you think you can give me our own road to bury a makeover? Hmm. I could, but Mimi doesn't just need a new outfit. She needs a total rebranding. I also need some magic, by the way. <laughs> Don't be shy, noob. In my domain, you can live your post-apocalypse fantasy to its fullest. What sort of character do you want me to create for you? Boring brainy accountant who, who, via heavy leathered aesthetics, has turned into the Deathbringer, the silent killing machine. The settlement uses the execute to execute invaders, shy or intimidating. Or road bounty hunter who keeps a tooth of every killed enemy as a trophy and they have murdered for so many people they can know. Rock a fashionable pair of teeth pants. I'm gonna take this dude. That sounds uh, scary. Fuck yeah, teeth pants with a will be a look. It says I'm a, a DIY queen, but I'm also a fucking freak. Your back story could be that you are a dentist by day and a murderer's status by night. They already go hand in hand. Oh god. Tell you what, I'll even give you your first job. There's plus money. A two money in it for you if you can bring me the head of the leader of our rival road warrior gang. So this is bringing us money. I need magic. I need to get ri rid of the, the witch next to me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> as long as you don't mind if they had toothless, you've got yourself a deal. You gleefully murdered the rival gang leader. You murdered the rest of this post, post too. Because that's the kind of both and beyond bounty hunting. Haunti hunting you're known for. You've taken several more jobs over the course of your road trip. And your teeth clothing collection grows. You only take a job on jobs that say wanted dead or alive. You bring them back dead. One percent of the time. Because how else are you supposed to get the teeth? Fuck the money. You're in this for the teeth. Soon you have to soon you have to have teeth pants, a teeth quest, questionable, comfortable teeth underwear, and even a teeth fedora. Um I am I'm a bit, I'm a bit shocked. Great work, Mimi. That teeth suit is absolutely sickening. What am I losing now? Yeah, every time I look at the bloody molars and bits of gum hanging off your clothes, I totally want to puke. <laughs> nice work, champ. Sure. Oh, I had a feeling. You lose two soul for committing so much murder, but anything for how we settle fashion. I messed it up. Okay, guys. This is really bad now. I need to look up if we're gonna get s somewhere some magic. This is it. This is my last chance. <laughs> Existence is pain. Yeah. I think this is a rip run. <laughs> yeah, what sort of gift shop even is this? Just a pop-up stand in the middle of the desert. And what are these products for say? What are they for? What are they even made of? Well, this is definitely weird, but you might as well. <sighs> Invest in this clearly booming in business. I need to get like lots of magic now. Last chance. Uni friends, get out of the car and enter whatever this place is. Greetings, fellow flashbacks. Welcome to the tea noodle gift shop. See anything you like? Oh, this stuff is so cool. What is this stuff anyway? Rocks, of course, they're the cold, silent onlookers that never look you back. Noodles, these rocks are this shit. How long have you been running this stand? Mm, long enough to know better than the answer personal questions. Nice, you're a really good business owner. You've got the makings of entrepreneurial greenness in you. Does he, though? Of course he does, dum dum. Check out all the natural business smarts and charisma oozing out of the noodles pores. Don't talk about the my users. We gotta invest in this booming business, y'all. These rocks are about to go big. Let's go all in and on now and get ahead of the curve. Why should this give me some magic? I know where this is going, Polly. Don't you remember the last time you invested in a booming business while you were drunk? 
Hey, I don't regret investing in dick shirts. Shirts for your dick. Scott loves them. What am I even reading? I'm wearing a dick crop top right now. All we got to do is decide how to use our investments to expand Noodle's business. I mean, what did you suggest? It words advertised in printed newspapers. They are so desperate for relevance that they may feature the stand for free. Officially sponsor a team of competitive rock, paper, scissors players. Or in times like these, you go big or you go home. Starting cinematic universe. I'm just going very big here. Good idea. We'll begin with four stages of movies to solidify our rock cinematic universe. Then you'll launch some spin-off TV shows and cartoons. Then we'll make some sequels and prequels, novels based on the movies, video games based on the novels, maybe an official brand of cereal. <laughs> hmm. They are milking out this IP, huh? And when you're when you're done with all that, we'll be just in time to re-release remastered versions of the original movies and get that nostalgia money. We'll be rich. Okay. What are the movies gonna be about? Soulless movies. Absolutely. Who cares? Show me the money. Ah. This is it. This is it. Uh, my magic is zero now. You spend too money creating this soulless mockery of cinema. Predictably, these movies are about nothing and nobody likes them. I refuse to know failure. Throw money at it until it works. <laughs> Finally managed to catch a stream. Hope you're all doing well, Phoenix One Hype, Phoenix One Love. Ah, oh, dear cow. Thank you so much for 35 months. Thank you. Good evening to you. I'm doing all right. What about yourself? I hope everything is also right for you. So you do spending one money again. Over time, you attract more investors to see some sort of lead capitalist potential in the RSU. Oh, this is just going bad. You get invited to some. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Game saved. You can invite you to some Hollywood producer parties. You gain plus two stamina from the open bars and one magic from the creativity enhancing powder they let you snort. What? I'm super lucky, right? Oh my fucking god, I just had a great idea. We need to make an RCU theme park. And can we make a motorcycle that's also a coffee machine? Put that in the movie too. And drugs. Drugs are cool. And add drugs to the RCU. You have to bail out of this money pit eventually, but at least you gain plus one high while it lasted. And over the years, from time to time, you hear about some new development in the extended RCU that the current showrunners are doing. Good work contributing to the show. Death Award, jump back to the road trip. Who's that? That was so close. We need to get rid of this girl now. <sighs> okay, wow, it's actually saved. Um, how can I get rid of her, by the way? Do I need to go to the bus station and I need to date somebody else? I think so, right? We're still in, yeah? We're super close, though. Wedding on Saturday, we signed for an apartment in Gittenburg. So doing well. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you must be very excited. Saturday. Damn. This Saturday. It's crazy, Cap. <laughs> I think the effect will disappear if you don't talk to her now. Not sure, though. Mm. I think I just want to make sure that I'm going to date somebody else. Later that night. Uh, change hitchhiker. Yeah, I need to, I want to kick her off. I'm going to do that. Valerie or Aravi. Uh, extra, next time you barter with noodles, you'll get plus one extra resource ag again. Um, hmm. For one week, every turn you'll gain plus one magic and lose one money. Is this better? <laughs> We need to get we just need to get sold up. Okay, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take her. Joy left the party. You invite Aravi to join your road trip. <sighs> okay, okay. Aravi joins the party. Four to go. But this is so dangerous, Lilo. Oh god. Oh god, oh god. <coughs> just wrote my wedding speech. What exciting streams did I miss here? We played a little spooky game, actually. And we finished Plague Tale uh, Requiem last week. Good game, by the way. Really, really good. Excited to see Wedding Pigs. I also want to see them. <laughs> also want to see them. So where are we going now? We still need to get magic a bit higher up. And of course, soul. 
Hype ist um... <lacht> But it's gonna happen automatically now. So let's do something good. Hype ist okay -ish. Doomstunner or is something if you do? Let's do it. Dooms, you read about this diner in a listicle of the top 10 most gross restaurants you should never ever visit. I think we all said this yesterday. Obviously, you took that as a challenge. Seriously, after all the dark magic you've messed with over the years, you think you can handle a diner? So now that you're here, what you gonna do? Um, use the jukebox. Um, order something. Stamina is okay though. Mind. Look for both. We, uh, we did this yesterday, so I'm just gonna skip this. Um, we're getting kicked out. Anyway. Uh, make a blood sacrifice. Um, that's the thing we did yesterday. Hi, Dino Shepherd to guide you. We're gonna do the opposite now. Good idea. Hey, you in the checkered booth. Are you a Sherpa? Ah, well, let me guess. You're assuming that a Sherpa is a person who can guide you through a dangerous foreign environment, yes? A Sherpa is actually a Tibetan ethnic group and reducing that group to a mere profession is a bit of a stereotype. You don't want a Sherpa, you want a guide. Oh, sorry about that. I'm guessing you're not a Sherpa then. Well, I happen to actually be a Sherpa, but that's beside the point. The important thing here is you are looking for a guide, okay? Yeah, I got it. Do you know where to find a guide who could lead us out of this diner then? As a matter of fact, I'm a regular here, so I could act as your guide too. So in this specific case, I'm both a Sherpa and a guide. But let's not allow this coincidence to inform your future use of this term, okay? Gotcha. Then follow me. I'll lead you out of here. Perfect, you pay. It's okay. It's okay. I, for a second, I thought it's we're losing magic because it's also starting with M. You're paying your new guide minus three money and he leads you on a hurrying journey through Doom's Diner. What was once a tedious, never-ending downer soon becomes something actually dangerous. The architecture of the place starts to break into Asherian structures that defy all logic. It's almost as if the downer was never a downer at all, but a sentient creature trying to pass as a downer, it's very unsettling. Like when the floor rapidly recedes, presenting a bottomless pit. You all jump back by, but the guide falls short. He managed to grab to an edge, but it doesn't look good. Quick, take my hand! No, you must run, don't worry, I always knew the risk of coming to this cursed diner. It just... It can't be their fried pickles, they're just really good. Before I can finish that sentence, he falls into the abyss as you run for your life. Hey, no running in the diner. What? As if the diner accepted your guide as an affording the, in the interior of the place is back to normal. You tell everything to Gerard. Ugh, so that happened. Can I interest you in a special daily offer of burgers with a side of fried pickles and the price is signing this agreement saying you can see Doom's Diner? Deal. Yeah, you, bur you eat your burgers while you mourn your friends. You gain three minds from freeing yourselves from that nightmarish maze. I'm so kind of sad, bros. That guide was really nice. Don't be sad, Scott. If you think about it or to be doing friend to didn't die in vain, you got these burgers out of it. Yeah, and he was right. These fried pickles are really good. I wonder if you can really do that. All right. I'm still having one magic though. Did I take did I take the wrong character? <sighs> this game so I <laughs> this game is uh, having a very weird kind of humor but it's funny. But yeah, definitely 18 plus. <laughs> what a break. Actually, that's a good point, but I need to grab some water, so I'm gonna be right back. <laughs>
Hello, Burbles. I'm back again. I think uh, Hitaka buffs only take effect after you talk to them at the end of the week. That makes sense, yeah. I was wondering. Then uh, we need to we need to be very careful what we're doing now, because we can lose very fast on magic. Um. So yeah, magic. We need to get magic and soul up. I'm not sure if you can do this both. Uh, business summit or um, low budget reptile show. Uh, high minus high magic and soul. Oof. Yeah, I think we're gonna go this way. The reptile show. You wouldn't be so cold blooded. You skip this show, would you? <laughs> cold blooded. Yeah, let's let's do the magic thing here. Thank you, Daz. Thank you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Scott is driving you all along the highway when you hit a huge traffic jam. Great, just great. Damn, we're not moving at all. I wonder what's uh, got us so backed up. Finding out would be more fun than waiting around here. Wanna walk up the road with me, Mimi? Good idea. About 20 cars ahead, you find a young woman subbing to a group of other annoyed motorists. We can't drive across the bridge, he wails. Had a vision that there will be a collision that'll kill dozens of people. Oh God, don't tell me this is one of those final destination situations. Suddenly an old truck, an old truck slams into a truck full of matches. They explode, killing dozens of motorists far ahead of you. Oh God. Yep, great. Just great. <laughs> oh no, it's fine, a destination thing. The crowd cries. We've created death. We've cheated death. And now we all be hunted down and killed in increasingly gory ways. It's not that big of a deal. At least you, your death will probably end up on someone's top 40 horror movie kills list. But we don't want to die. Only hope is to kill someone else and steal their lifespan. Fine. Oh, dear Sock. <laughs> No, thank you so much for the gift itself. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> if that's what it takes to clear this highway, anyone want to store this stabbing Mimi? Stabby stab? No, thank you. There's got to be some other way to calm these people down so you can get through this traffic jam. Think of something. <sighs> I'm so scared of losing magic. Mm. Let's all go to a final destination safe discourse to be properly prepared against all the unlikely mortal scenarios or fake IDs for everyone. I can't. Nah, I can't do this because of my soul. I'm gonna do the first one. Let's go the safe way. You, Polly Scott and the terrified motorists all attend to safety course. Good afternoon, says the instructor. Welcome to the destination safety seminar. We'll learn invaluable tips and tricks on cheating death. I think we're just gonna lose some hype here. That's okay. A bit late for me, but sure. Go on. Tip one, dull every sharp edge in your vicinity. You can kiss the life using a scissors, knives and square furniture. Goodbye. Tip two, always look both ways before crossing the street. Lest you be hit by surprise bosses, falling panes of glass or collapsing neon signs. Tip number three, always be on the lookout for cruel irony. If you're in a dangerous place filled with sharp objects, be sure that the thing that actually kills you will be completely unassuming, like a rock or a flag. <laughs> if you're getting eye surgery, we expect you to go blind. If you're an asshole, beware anus related injuries. Eh, uh, what? Okay, you've got lots of tips, but what about the actual cheating death part? Besides taking an innocent life, the only other known way to cheat death is to create new life. Is there anyone here who wasn't tied to the accident that's willing to take one of the team and get pregnant? Nope, nope, absolutely not. We're leaving now. Good luck with the whole being on death list thing. You lost three hype waiting in a traffic, but you gained three minds from that informative seminar. I had a feeling it was just too boring for her. You're welcome. I need to test something. <laughs> Well, thank you for testing this over my channel then. <laughs> thank you so much, dear Thug. Welcome to the Reptile Variety Show. Me, the cold-blooded critters with a passion for this stage. There are a few performances scheduled for the day. Which show do you want to see? Yeah, that's the thing. I would definitely... <laughs> Thug, you, what are you testing? <laughs> thank you so much again for the gifted sub. What are you exactly testing? I'm curious. Thank you so much, dear Thug. Thank you so much for the support. It means so much to me. Thank you, thank you. I was about to say I would, I would definitely go for for soul here, but I'm not sure if this is gonna take some magic. So um, let's do the magic one, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it would be charming snakes or crocodile, but it's stage magician. Improv iguanas. 
Let's do this. You settle in to watch the show. The stagehands bring out a stool, a microphone, and a 1,100 pound reptilian killing machine in a funny hat. I'm a, I am Reptilizar, a famed crocodilian magician known for a wide throughout the every glades. Prepare to be amazed. For my first trick, I will make this rabbit disappear. Someone brings the crocker rabbit, he puts his head in front of his face. The bunny shrieks, then there's chewing, so I had a feeling. He's just gonna eat the rabbit, you mother trucker. Okay, you're obviously just eating the rabbit. You can't call the food chain magic boo. Mm, I see what we've got hecklers in tonight's audience. You doubt now, but wait until you see my next trick. I'll make this entire pig disappear over the course of an hour with the aid of this magical barbecue sauce. You're not even trying. Can you make anything disappear without just eating it? Ugh, of course I can. Reptilizar can make anything disappear. Anything you can think of, I'll make it gone. Say, if he's telling the truth, that could be really useful. And if he's lying, it's all the more entertaining for you. What do you ask the croc to make disappear? That's weird. Uh, funny. Uh, I can give away single subs as soon as I make two. It doesn't work. Oh, you wanted to gift more? Oh, that's weird. Maybe it's just uh, something with Twitch going on again. That sounds weird. All of my adult obligations, my internet resource history because of reasons. <laughs> I'm gonna take the first one though. <laughs> adult obligations. You mean like wearing underwear? No, I want the whole shebang, no more work, no more meetings, just time to sit around and play video games. Very well. Shibi, shubi, like a zooey. Reptilos are waste the magic wand around, then grabs your phone out of your lap before you can stop him. Hello? Is this Mimi's boss? Great! I'm calling on behalf of Mimi. She's quitting our job. Effective immediately. <laughs> Goodbye, Twitch. <laughs> what? Yeah, she's absolutely serious. And to really burn the bridge, she would like to, you know, and I'm quoting her directly here, that you're an incompetent, insufferable, poopy hat whose only positive contribution to the world would be dropping debt. Holy shit, I'm gonna lose my job now. Fuck yeah, go off! How's that for a magic trick for me? I just made your entire career disappear. <laughs> yep, great. You gain three magic for witnessing such a magical trick, but you lose three money. Oh no, my money is going low now. From all the paychecks, you won't get any more. I have no idea how to handle this game. I just lost my job. <laughs> um... Money, soul, unknown, or 90s action movies. I think we didn't do this yesterday. <laughs> oh dear Soggy, thank you so much again. Thank you so much again for the gifted sub. Actually, I should say thank you so much for the three gifted sub. Doesn't work. I have no idea why though. No idea. Thank you so much for trying though. <laughs> thank you very much. I need to be careful with my money now, right? Am I gonna get money here? 90s action movie city. Uh, let's do this. We didn't do this yesterday. We visited this place. Let's do it. You think it has something to do with uh, your internet provider? Hmm. I think it has something to do with Twitch. This is a city ravaged by heists, villains, government, corruption, and so, and tough guys doing anything to rescue their daughters. A city like this needs a hero, someone brave, bold, and badass, preferably be with a guns and washboard abs. <laughs> You're definitely not the hero that the city needs or deserves, but you're here now, so fuck it! What do you know want to do in this 90s style action fest? Um, car chasers? I think this is gonna bring us hype, but I'm gonna probably gonna lose some soul. Sun explosions? Mmm. 90s crawl ready when stamina you know what let's do this you know france decided to check out a museum it seems one and it's also one of the only buildings in the city not being actively blown up hey polly scott meet me over here oh hey dahlia why are you hiding behind this big potted plant because i'm being sneaky obviously listen we don't have much time the bad guys are minutes away from enacting their big museum heist I'll keep you guys safe, but you need to crawl in this vent with me so we can jump their asses in a wicked gunfight. Wait, back up. Who are the bad guys? Why are you involved? Why do we need to get in a vent? Can we just walk to the room where they are in or take an elevator? 
Too many questions. This feeble action movie plot doesn't have time for exposition. Exposition. Polly only suspense and gunfights. No, come on. Fair enough. You crawl into the van with Dahlia. As you crawl, you pass two guys in bomber jackets and sunglasses. Oops, pardon us. Pardon us. They say we're just looking for the motherfuckers who kidnapped our daughters. I heard the daughter kidnapper's head out is down the leftmost tunnel. Give him hell, gentlemen. You then pass a woman in leather spandex. Don't tell anyone I was here, she says. I'm an international spy eavesdropping in a terrorist meeting. What are these stories? <laughs> My lips are sealed, miss. Good luck saving the world. Then you pass a guy with a gnarly eyebrow scar. Oh, sorry, guy. Sorry, he says. I'm just trying to get out of here. He moves goodbye, only to realize he's crawling in the same direction as you. Oh, are you guys headed to this way too? I guess we're going there together then. Oh, great. Now we have this awkward tension where we're all pretending not to notice this guy, but it's so obvious that he's still crawling with us. Can't take the suffocating silence. Maybe you talk about something. Uh, well, we could discuss the weather, but it's, but it's hard to know what's the current weather is when you are in an air wind. So what else you got? <laughs> Find common ground. Praise the city government for their recent investment in local infrastructure. Books on tripling the number of fans in every building. Or ask him if he's if he's read anything interesting lately. What? Action movie series can also read intellectually stimulating books. <laughs> Let's take this one. Oh, I agree. It's great that our mayor cares so much about city infrastructure, especially since buildings get blown upon up all the time around here. It's also nice that the mayor mandated that they, they be replaced so often when in the city get worn out so quickly for some reason. Yeah, it's weird, right? We only get like six months before the winds get clogged up with bullet shells and dead bodies. Yes, until the mystery of the of why gets solved, I'm glad our government takes one politics so seriously. <sighs> Agreed. Hmm. So that's the small taco. I have the problem also outside of Twitch. I cannot review my sub on Spotify. Oh, that's weird. That's actually weird. I'm not sure if, has, if this has something to do with uh, with uh, Vodaf Vodafone still though. Maybe something with your bank card? Or PayPal? Something like that? It's still weird though. We're still not talking anymore. Fuck, we're back to awkward silence already. Small talk is so hard. It's got... E you say something now. Uh, so what do you do for a living, bro? <laughs> oh, nothing fancy. I'm the leader of a high crew trying to escape with millions of dollars at the museum's prized jewelry. What? Dali ends up having a epic fight in the event. It's the most action heroic thing you've ever seen. She wins by kicking the terrace in the face and sending him flying into the dangerously sharp AC fan blades spinning behind you. Oof. Uh, I don't suppose the mayor is gonna be uh, do, is gonna do anything about that vent safety hazard. Victory is mine. It was so clever, clever of you guys to get the bad guy to reel himself with the power of your tedious chit chat. Lost three stamina, crawling for so long, but you can, guys. Plus three so for praising the mayor's good choices. Damn. We're actually popping off now. One soul missing. I still can... Uh, I still can get trouble here, right? With losing money, though. So we need to be patient. You're getting lots of money here. Wealthy mansion or... What's this? Mind, hype, unknown, ready, set, relax. I'm gonna go to the wealthy mansion, I think. Or to the spa. I'm gonna get the money. A little bit. Oh, hello, Manu. Good evening to you. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. This is one of the fancy house. These people must be rich, rich, actually rich. They're sort of unsetting vibe to this place, but that's probably just what being rich feels like. Now's your chance to bar barge in and see what mil billionaire living is billionaire living is like for yourself. What interests you most? Family games, grandma's fun experiments, babysitting the children. Let's take the fun experiments. <laughs> you and your friends ring the manor doorbell and a wealthy woman dressed in forest answers. Oh, hello, she says. Are you here to look after grandpa? 
Uh, we're not trained to care for all the people, really. I don't care. He's driving me nuts. I'll give you three money to look after him. Follow me. Okay, what am I going to lose for that, though? I'm going to lose all right. Ah, <laughs> man, it's so hard. Okay, you're taking to your dark, shadowy basement where you find an old man using a circle I saw. Oh, visitors, hello, says Grandpa. Grandpa, come in and come in. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Grams. <laughs> what is the place? <laughs> you sure have a lot of old Splash Kaboom games lying around. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me so much of Crash Bandicoot, actually. I told you about the gift I prepared when my dad arrived. It arrived in nice. Is it uh, how you expected it? I hope it's uh, having good quality. Yellow Sonic. <laughs> it's a it's a mashup of everything. <laughs> Have much more than just the game, Grandpa Goshos. I'm the biggest Splash Kaboon fan in the world. Let me show you some of my work. Okay. This is Crimson Dark Heart, my original Splash Kaboom character. He's Splash, best friend in Uzu's class, such and radical charm. I see, the design is certainly uh, creative. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why is there a ghost set on the booty? Yes, isn't Crimson amazing? He's just the sort of guy you'd like to know in real life, don't you think? Maybe someday. <laughs> and this is Crimson's loyal steed, Excelsior the Ghost Wolf. Now this is looking like Sonic. And all the best OCs have minor OCs attached to them to build lore. This is a really weird looking horse. You know, <clears throat> you know, says Grandpa, stoking Scott's fur. You kids are remarkably similar to Excelsior, almost if you're two halves of his whole body. As if God put you in my lap so that I may stitch you together and make my incredible steed a reality. Pump the brakes, Grams. Loving your OCs is one thing, but doing a meteor surgery to bring your OCs to life is a step too far. Shh, don't worry, it'll all be over soon. Stay here. I'm going to get my forceps. Psh, Polly, is it just me or this starting to get weird? No shit, it's getting weird. Grandpa wants to stitch us together into cursed OC Chimera. I love you guys, but I'm not spending the rest of my life soon to Scott's butt. We need to escape, but first we'll need his distraction. Tell Grandpa to explain in great details the good old days of Splash early seasons. Do your best to teach him how to use the internet. That's where Splash lives. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. <laughs> yep, clay <laughs> station, yeah, it's so well made. That should work. Hey, Grandpa, do you want to meet Splash for real? Are you kidding? That would be my dream. Do you know where he is? He lives in the magical digital world we call the internet. Have you heard of it? Oh, that place where young folks go to invent new genders? That's all a bit beyond me. Not anymore. Mimi here is eternally online. She's show you the ropes. Mimi helps Graham set up an AO4 account. So passes the most frustrating 20 minutes of your life as you try to explain to Grandpa how to open this, his browser window. You want me to open the window? Grandpa asks, walking toward the window in the wall. Is it so splash? Can enter through the window? No, I mean the window on this computer. You just need to click on the browser icon. Click? What is a click? Splash doesn't make clicking sounds. His voice is radical and devil may care. Okay, that's enough distraction. One more second of this and I'm gonna lose my mind. It's okay. Scott now. Scott hits Grandpa across the head with a with a chair, knocking him unconscious. You all run for the exit. Wait, bros, this isn't the way out. This is a dungeon or something. From the shadowy corner of the dungeon, a bleeding, shambling, stitched together creature trudges toward you. No, oh, what the king talking about? The fuck is that? Um... You guys gotta go fast. Um, what the hell is going on? The exits up these stairs hurry before you end up like me. Never have you ever fled a room so fast. Time to repress this whole traumatic experience for your own sanity. Yay, road trip! Oh, goodness. Well... <clears throat> I don't need magic anymore. <laughs> Would be nice to have my, my friend again. Mm. Giving a soul. But yeah, I think I'm going to go to the info stand. Funny mock-up. Yeah. 
it was at the beginning it was some kind of a crash bandicoot reference magic mind money unknown soul oh my god am i so unlucky i don't want to lose soul i don't i want to get soul okay okay chat um Let's go this way. Week number number five. Or the planetarium, we were never there. Let's go this way. Holy, can I stick my head out of the car? God, this is a convertible. Your head is always out the car. <laughs> ah stars monster khan has been fascinated by them for as long as society has been alive there is nothing like staring at the night sky and realizing that space is massive and timeless and you're just one speck in an oncoming universe if that gives you any don't worry there's plenty to do at the planetarium besides contemplating your own insignificance for example you could uh, ident identify constellations attend the comet shower watch the laser show um, let's watch the comment shower. Lucky for you, there is a comment shower happening tonight. You and your friends settle in at the planetarium to enjoy special viewing. This is so cool. I love comment showers. The shooting stars are also pretty. This takes me back to the last summer. Scott, remember that meteor shower at the end of the summer camp? Oh yeah! You and I decided to take a break from being super invested in finding a date and watch the shower as a friend, as friends. Your bid was great. I'm glad we weren't one of those desperate motherfuckers losing sleep over finding you somewhere, honey. Damn, Polly. Didn't have to scab you like that. Gotta lurk a bit. Thank you for the lurk, then, dear does. Thank you. What are you guys gonna wish for when the stars start shooting? That's a good question. Hmm. What I wanna wish for? Wishing for a flask that never come taste would be pretty sweet. Maybe I could wish for a talkie octopus that gives me a massage. <laughs> hmm. That sounds actually great. I was gonna wish for a world peace, but a massage octopus sounds so much cooler. <laughs> I can't decide now. Here comes the first shooting star. We only have one chance of good wish, Mimi. What should we wish for? Dang, you never know what to wish for. That's why you still have wishes left in your monkey's paw. Maybe you can use for use your wish number um, to wish for the clarity to know what to wish for. <laughs> Provide the opportunity to sound cool and spend your wishes on selfless deed. Wish Scott hadn't put his hand in this in that marmalade jar that was full of wasp. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> hey, that's a good wish, and it was really nice of you to use your wish to make my life nicer. Maybe I'm just hoping I'm getting more soul here. Scott, that reminds me, is your hand still stuck in that wasp infested marmalade jar? It sure is. Man, I've probably had my hand in this thing for like four hours. Oh. Damn, that's right. I remember we we're gonna try to get it off, but then we got distracted by that cool looking cloud and totally forgot about it. That cloud was so cool. It looked like a duck riding a skateboard upside. <laughs> yeah, that sounds actually cool. But then if you squinted at it and stood on your head, it looked more like a walrus taking a sponge bath. And then when the wasp stung the eyelids and made them small and puffy, the cloud looked like a heat or a plain snail. The Wes? Oh, right, Scott, we almost forgot about the jar again. <laughs> You're right. That cloud's so cool, it's still distracting us. Well, better act now before your short attention spans run out again. You smash the marmalade jar with a hammer and the angry wasp fly away. I feel a lot better now. Thanks, Mimi. I'm gonna give you some soul. Oh, do you guys... Is it happening? No. Do you guys grasp what just happened? Mimi wished on the shooting star for Scott to be freed and her, her wish came true. You're right, Mimi's like a star wishing wizard. It's gonna be magic now, right? If her wish was bound to come true, though, it's a shame she didn't wish for something cooler like three matching aquatic bikes or something. You're right, what would have been a really cool wish? Oh well, guess it's a missed opportunity. <laughs> That's a shame. <gasps> we made it! You lose three heart but gain three soul for being a good friend to Scott. Of course! <laughs> we made it! But the game is still going on. Maybe we need to finish until the rest of the week. Okay, don't mess it up, Mimi. We can go to the graveyard, pay your respects or don't. I can also lose soul again, right? Yeah. I don't want to go to the prison again. 
Let's go here. I think I swallowed a mosquito. Remember to suppress your gag reflex, God. <laughs> Graveyards are solemn, quiet places made for reflection, paying respects to the dead. If you're a snooze fan, stupid, you're worth Polly and Scott, which means a graveyard is the perfect place to play a prank. Yeah, the only question is what the best prank to pull. I don't want to play a prank. Raise the dead. Mm, crash. Oh, that means I'm going to lose some, some soul here. Raise the dead. You're all wandering around the graveyard when you hear gritty guitarists and a guy whine singing about how much he hates this town. You follow the sound of Gerard, Gerard to the necromancer lounging in the graves, listening to music and drinking beer. Oh, great. I see you found my secret hideout for the rare night that I choose to be my brooding, to do my brooding outdoors. That's cool. Graveyard drinking is a hobby of mine, too. As you usually bump EDM, though, the elderly ghosts in my neighborhood really hate it. All right. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy drowning at my dark, my dark and twisted thoughts and booze. Ah, oh, damn, my beer is slightly out of my reach. Just a second. Lorem ipsum dolor sit amit. There's a flash of light, then a zombie claws out of the dirt. It's rotting, shambling, and crying brains. Yep, brains, right. Could you just hand me my beer there to the left? No, my left. Yep, perfect. Good work. Throw. Oh, your zombie's so cute. Like one of those old lovely chihuahuas you can't help but love. Can we name him Tickles? I had a hamster named Tickles once, but I accidentally ate him because I thought I, it was a he was a potato chip. Oh, no, you can't name him. You just get attached to him. Tickles is going right back in the ground once I finish my six pack. How can you give him a taste of life and then rip it all away like that? This isn't followers for Algolan, Algernon, you know, you asshole. Why are you so upset about this? Just a zombie. They're usually just animated corpses with no personalities of free will. Hmm. Let's test that. Hey, Tickles, if you have free will, say brains. Brains. See? Total sentience. Tickles is in there. We just need something to draw that dazzling personality out of its shell. What do you suggest, Mimi? Brains is nice and useful, but you can help Tickles by teaching him a second essential word for his repertoire. The zombie is screaming brains, but you know what he's really asking for? A taxi line. <laughs> okay, I think there's going to be somebody else with a taxi license now. They can't even drive. The only thing this shambling creature wants is to embrace the cold quiet of his coffin. Gerard, Gerard, buddy, bro, dude, Gerard, think about it. If moves... If movies have taught us anything, it's that zombies have two major weaknesses. They are slow as fuck and they don't have a day, do day job. They provide them daily susten sustenance. This solves both problems. What could go wrong? You buy tickles and tax license for three months. Oh my God, I got scared. For money and game plus three. So for giving his afterlife a new purpose. In the post-apocalyptic future, two citizens are sprinting away from the zombies that know that now ravage New York City. They can barely outrun the undead mob. Look, honey, that tux is coming toward us. It must be fellow survivor. The couple jumps in the open doors and the taxi speeds off. Yeah, thanks for picking us up. We're headed to the Northern Boulevard in Queens. The taxi driver responds by turning his head around 180 degrees and going, Brains! Oh God, he's eating me. I knew he should have called an Uber. Pull over, I'm not paying for this shit. Turn off the meter, turn off the fucking meter. You've seen slow zombies, you might have even seen weird sort of fast zombies. But in this summer blockbuster hit, get ready to see a taxi driving zombie. Taxi zombie lunch runch is coming soon to the theater near you. <laughs> okay. Um, the casino or movie set? Hype, stamina. Uh, stamina means probably we're gonna... Uh, chances are you're gonna have a fun time. Mm -hmm. I have so much soul. Can I just end this game? Oi, oi, oi. Okay, let's do it. I can still fail. Please don't take my money. Games are us. There was a there was a sign with games are us. <laughs> Flashing lights, rolling dice, people sobbing as their lives fortunes are gambled away. Gamba. Oh, like in chat, huh? No doubt about it, you were at a casino. Gambling is risky and reckless, but so is going on a road trip with Polly and Scott. So whatever, the question is now that you're here, what will you play? Uh, oh God, what is this now? The stats which are affected are random. 
Oh, it's because the casino. Poker. Skilled poker. Okay. You enter the casino ready to make some sweet money. Why did we do this, Chance? Yes, I love casinos. The land of random chance, impulse decisions, and drinking. Everything is coming up to Polly. You're the expert here, bro. What game should we play? Poker, of course. It's got some degree of skill, even if a lot of it comes from the down to getting lucky with a good hand. Only problem is that I'm six old fashioned. Fashion, it's deep and way too drunk to read the card faces right now. So I'll just entertain myself by watching Mimi play. Okay, I'll watch Mimi too. Uh, it'll be, I'll be happy if you win, bro. And I'll be really, really sad if you lose. Cool. So now, not only are you risking losing money, but your friends will be much watching your play as well. Pressure's on. Oh, guys, I'm going to lose money here. You sit down in the last available seat at the nearby poker table. Okay, table's closed, says the dealer. Time to start a round of poker too. Wait, poker too? The fuck is that? You never heard of poker too, boo? Do you live under a rock or what? It's like a normal po po poker, poker, <laughs> where the dealer puts five cards on the table and he gives you two. Then you just pick one card from your hand to play and place a bet then. So you just play the best card you have. Sounds easy enough. The dealer spread five cards out on the table, the three of hearts, the five of spades, the ace of hearts, the jack of hearts, and the queen of hearts. Okay, being dealt, a heart could give you a flush. That's something. You're giving your cards. These are not normal poker cards. What's the hold up, Mimi? Pick your cards. Uh, <laughs> okay. Chat, this is completely RNG now. The 44 of clubs or the three, three of swords. I'm gonna take the 44 of clubs, I think. You wanna take the swords? Swords are cool. Okay, we're gonna take the swords, chat. I fold, sides the first player. The second player flips over an ace of spades. Ha! <laughs> Two aces, read them and weep. You fool, game for aces on a table full of hearts. Loves the third player. Behold my king of hearts. Ah, eyes flush available, sucker. Now it's your turn. You slowly turn over your cards. Oh god, chat. A three of swords? No, that's bad news! It is? Indeed, says the dealer gravely, pulling out a pager. I need to call down the resident casino your fortune teller. A man of flowing robes appears and assesses your card. He says, I'm a general context. In a general context, the threes of swords represent unhappiness, heartache, sorrow, and sadness. <laughs> when it appears in your tarot reading, it indicates a period of difficulty or hardship, usually on an emotional level. Oh no. Well, Mimi, you came here to make a fortune and you got a bad fortune. That's gambling for ya. Man, you leave the table and lose more money. Overcome by unhappiness, sorrow and sadness, stupid poker too. I wanted to take the other cards, guys. I'm just blaming you for that. But it's not game over, luckily. <sighs> too money. <laughs> oh god, this is so mm, okay. LAR. We did we we did do the LARP yesterday, but we don't have any stats here. The other car would have lost 40 m m money, maybe. Maybe, yeah, you're right. Let's go do the LARP. Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, this LARP is crawling with humans. Real, actual humans. That's weird. It must be one of those areas where the dimensional fabric between the human and monster realms is starting to tear. Strange to the humans aren't screaming or grabbing at pitchforks, which goes against all you know about their thoughts on monsters. They must think your fellow humans dressed up for the LARP. Fine by you. Their ignorance is your bliss. Since you're here, what LARP activity are you interested in trying? Uh, I think we tried to be a GM the last time. What about being an NPC? PvP, we could lose some stamina there, right? NPC, probably we would lose some hype because it's too boring. Let's do some PvP then. You are at the LARP, working at the courage to order a whole leg of mutton when Scott runs up to you, you excitedly. Polly, the LARP organizer, said you're doing a scavenger hunt. Whoever finds the one bracelet to rule most things wins a prize. We're getting that bracelet. A bracelet then? What's the first clue? Intrepid travelers, search for the bracelet if you dare. Your first clue is that your prize is over there. You look where like Scott's pointing and see the one bracelet to rule most things literally sitting on a pedestal. Sweet! You rush to grab it, but some punk ass human grabs it at the same time. It's too late, Willens. We found the bracelet first. I invoke your honor to give us your prize fair and square. 
Okay, well I invoke finders, keepers, losers, weepers. We saw the race at first, so back the fuck up. Fine, if you won't stand down, we'll settle this the old-fashioned way with violence. Do we have to use violence? Could I try making a seduction check instead? Sorry, but I don't want to find a bunch of humans. I could hurt you, your skulls are so fragile. <laughs> what are you calling human? I'm obviously a vampire. I've got a razor sharp fangs and a louvre. Anti-heroic aura. Ah, uh, yeah, but when your razor sharp fangs are obviously plastic replicas from Party Town, it kind of takes the oof out of it. No more talking. Combat has begun. We've chosen our champion who will be yours. The sassy alchemist or the buff end. Who knows? We don't make decisions. Ask Mimi. <laughs> what are we going to do? Polly the potion maker, the shop stopper, the breath taker, the harbinger, harbinger of chaos. Binger? Scott the good boy. He has good intentions and apples. Maybe? Uh, it's going to be the witch. Yes, it's Polly time, bitch. Ah, you might as well surrender now. Your alchemist bolt is totally weak against my vampire powers. It rhymes with ginger. Binger. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, which ones are the vampire powers again? You know, the shit Liam does when being purple turning into hot dogs and annoying people. What? Have you even read the core rule book? Vampires turn into bats, not hot dog stands. And their skin isn't purple, it's sexually pale. Like moonlight glittering on the back of a dying swan. Well... You've clearly got the being annoying part down. Ugh, I attack my children! The vampire throws some rubber bats at Polly. She faces out of where she was standing and appears behind them. Nice try, Count Dorkola. How did you do that? You were just over there. I don't know ghost powers. But you can have ghost powers. You're already an alchemist. Having two classes against the LARP rule. <laughs> I know, but I sort of drank all my potions while you were being annoying. So ghost powers it is. You are such a cheater. I'm telling the GM. Good job, bro. You made him retreat. Yep. Lucky for me being annoying. Is it? Is it ghost power too? You gained plus three heart witnessing Polly's. <gasps> oh my god. My heart. But you lost three magic you, she used to brew her potions. Mimi's turn. Why is this not ending though? Why is this not opening? <laughs> Later that night. His interest in the night sky. We uh, we already had this um, yesterday. This conversation. I'm just gonna skip this. Why am I not reaching one of the the endings? Wait, this is a new conversation. Then what is the playful pelican? It represents a pelican, and rumors say it's very playful. What about that one? I think the one is Sky Umbrella. It looks like an umbrella and I like to think it protects the other stores when it rains so they don't get wet. Scott, yeah? I think those names are very cool. Oh, thanks, bro. You keep losing at the stars. That's as Scott tells you about the different constellation he's made up. It's warm, cozy night. Wherever the prank masters go, uh, hijinks into you can handle the consequences of their mass. Next week, all resource gains and loose from events are increased by one. We got it! Fulfilled! Oh? Wait, this is one of the endings now. Oh la la, chat. Hell is real. <laughs> the road trip comes to an end. <laughs> Welcome to the city of wise. They indulge yourself unapologetically. Un Gambling, parties, crimes, you name it. <laughs> On the last night, you go all in. So much so that the next day you remember nothing. 
The whole the room is a mess. There is a ton of random hats, a katana, some fruits, dragon heat, body pillow, <laughs> a bathtub with a beer. Damn, whatever happened last night, Ichu was something. <laughs> the bear in the bathtub. Congrats, you've reached your destination. There's more to it. Every player gets an individual ending. You could end up being a lame loser, just okay, or the MVP. In multiplayer mode, the result will be determi determined based on how much you re each contributed to the resource needed to reach the destination. In single player mode, it's de determined by your overall resource spread. There is also the date ending, which has its own requirements. That ending of a, of a lame loser will override the date ending. No dates allowed for lame losers. Anyway, let's judge you. Oh, recently you found a lamppost. It is a really cool lamppost. You've been spending lots of time with the lamppost. You found... You thought of bringing it to the city of Wise with you. Your friends told you that's a weird idea. It's a lamppost, not a love interest. Your friends know nothing. Ignore Mrs. They don't get you like the lamppost gets you. Fuck City of Wise and fuck your friends. They probably just want to fuck the lamppost. Jealous assholes. You proceed to make out with the lamppost. What am I reading here? Your life rocks. <laughs> Damn, that was a very hard run. Locations. What the hell? Look at the outcomes. 45 of 683. Good ending? I didn't reach a good ending. <laughs> New destination layers. New good endings. Damn, this game is very deep. So I need to reach this three times. Damn. Interesting. Well, time to grind. Guess you were a lame I guess so. But I like I like my life. It's not too bad. <laughs> oh burbles. <laughs> Just like that, the road trip come to an end. It was a week of danger, fun and utter nonsense. It was everything we could have expected from a trip with Polly and Scott and then some. We not only survived the whole thing, but we concurred. It came out different people. It all turned out to be pil pilgrimage to self discovery, a rite of passage, a class of growth. That is to say, a fucking good road trip. As we were heading back home, I thought about how all of this was just one of the first stops in a much bigger journey that was only just beginning. It felt ominous and a bit scary, but it was all going to be all right, because we were young and enough unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to the streaming version of the credit song. My name is Claudi Martinez. Oh yeah. Credit? <laughs> no. Why are they not using the ox slot of the car? The voice actors are gonna get it at soon. Well, the good thing is I was all doing <laughs> everything here. I I'm glad I played the version without voice actors. The, the streamer is not jobless here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Please consider leaving a good review. <laughs> if you have enjoyed, of course. <laughs> this weird little game. Helps us creators a lot. Thanks. <laughs> Seeing Monster Prom 4. Ooh. I think a long road trip with friends is definitely nice. Yeah, for sure. Just hard to find uh, some time together. <laughs> you want to do this for three, four weeks? Thanks for playing. Thank you, Burbles, for playing with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can definitely get so many hours in this game. Destinations have more to offer now. Go check the destinations guide. So that's what we've unlocked. That's cool. I will I will definitely play more off stream. Thank you, Burbles, once again for playing uh, Monster Road Trip with me. Thank you. That was my first monster. I always want to say Monster Hunter. Monster Prom, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> 